Welcome to our world news program. Today, we have some fascinating stories lined up for you. First, Tesla is recalling over 1.6 million cars in China due to a potential trunk latch issue. The company plans to fix this through a remote software upgrade, ensuring the safety of its customers in this crucial market. Next, India is significantly expanding its influence in the Pacific region. President Drupadi Murmu's recent visits to Fiji, New Zealand, and to more or less highlight India's growing strategic interests, particularly in response to China's increasing presence. Finally, we turn to Paris, where concerns over water quality in the Seine River have been addressed, allowing the Olympic Marathon swim test run to proceed. Organizers are confident that the events will go ahead as planned, thanks to favorable weather forecasts and improved water conditions. Please stay tuned for more detailed coverage. Associated Press Tesla is recalling 1.68 million cars in China for a remote software upgrade to ensure that drivers are warned when the trunk is not locked shut, as announced by China's market regulator. This recall affects imported Model S and Model X vehicles, as well as domestically made Model 3 and Model Y cars manufactured between October 2020 and July 2024. The recall notice mentioned that an unlocked trunk lid could open during driving, potentially obstructing the driver's vision, although it did not specify if such incidents had occurred. Tesla will address the issue through a remote software update, and any vehicles with faulty trunk latches will be repaired free of charge. This move comes amidst a challenging period for Tesla, which reported a significant decline in second-quarter net income due to falling sales despite price cuts and low-interest financing. China remains a crucial market and production base for Tesla, but the company faces increasing competition from local EV manufacturers. South China Morning Post, zealous fan culture is increasingly disrupting Chinese sports, particularly table tennis, despite calls from the General Administration of Sport of China and the Chinese Olympic Committee for more respectful and orderly support. This issue was highlighted during the Paris Olympics, where the women's singles final between Chinese table tennis players Chen Meng and Sun Ingsha was marred by the unruly behavior of Sun's fans. Their noisy and unsporting conduct, including booing Chen when she scored, created a hostile environment that bewildered many viewers and even led some neutral fans to support Chen instead. Such extreme fan behavior not only undermines the integrity and spirit of athletic competition but also poses serious threats to athletes' well-being and the honorable representation of sports teams. It is crucial to address this issue to maintain the essence of athletic competition and promote a healthy sports culture in China, where fans should learn to accept losses gracefully instead of attacking the winning players. Associated Press, a test run for Olympic athletes to familiarize themselves with the marathon swimming course in the Seine River will proceed following concerns about water quality that led to the cancellation of a previous test. Officials from World Aquatics, Paris 2024, and other bodies determined that the latest water test results were acceptable. The women's marathon swim is scheduled for Thursday, with the men's event on Friday. The marathon swims will take place on a 1.67-kilometer course along the Seine, starting and finishing at the Pont Alexander III. Despite historical pollution issues, Paris has invested 1.4 billion euros in infrastructure improvements, including a basin to capture excess rainwater and upgrades to sewer and wastewater treatment systems, to ensure the river's suitability for swimming events. While water quality is closely tied to weather conditions, recent favorable forecasts have bolstered confidence that the events will proceed as planned. Paris Mayor and Hidalgo, who swam in the Seine last month to demonstrate its improved condition, expressed pride in the city's efforts to depollute the river. Reuters Breaking Views. Bohai Bank, supported by Stanchart, is offloading $4 billion in non-performing assets, highlighting the pressure banks face as property-related loans deteriorate. The bank, based in Tianjin, a heavily indebted region, has seen its profits plummet due to falling real estate prices and manufacturing overcapacity. Last year, nearly half of its loan book was concentrated in northern and northeastern China, leading to a significant drop in profit before tax. With $2 billion in non-performing loans, Bohai Bank plans to sell assets at up to a 40% discount, taking a substantial hit to its net profit. This sale occurs amidst strained conditions for asset management companies, or bad banks, like Cinda, which are also struggling with their balance sheets and profitability. As China's banks hold $1.1 trillion in non-performing and special mention loans, buyers are likely to drive harder bargains, complicating disposals like Bohai Bank's. South China Morning Post China's export growth in July fell short of expectations, growing by 7% year-on-year to $300.56 billion, missing the forecasted 9.5% and lower than June's 8.6%.
This growth is partly due to a low baseline from the previous year when exports hit their lowest since February 2020. Imports rose by 7.2% from a year earlier, contrasting with June's 2.3% decrease. The July trade surplus stood at $84.65 billion, down from June's $99.05 billion. Despite fending off a domestic economic downturn in the first half of the year, China's exports face increasing barriers from U.S. and EU tariffs. The U.S. has delayed tariffs on over 100 Chinese goods, while the EU's decision on tariffs for Chinese electric vehicles is pending. Global economic uncertainties and protectionism are expected to pressure China's foreign trade in the latter half of the year, with the yuan weakening slightly against the U.S. dollar. Australian Broadcasting Corporation India's quiet but significant push into the Pacific region is gaining attention, with President Drupadi Murmu visiting Fiji, New Zealand, and Timor-Leste. This marks the first visit by an Indian head of state to Timor-Leste and Fiji, symbolizing India's growing ambitions in the Pacific. India's historical ties to Fiji date back to the 19th century, with a significant portion of Fiji's population of Indian descent. Since Prime Minister Narendra Modi's shift from Look East to Act East policy in 2014, India's engagement in the Pacific has increased, including through the Forum for India-Pacific Islands Cooperation, FIPIC. India has committed to various development projects, such as funding an airport terminal in the Marshall Islands and a hospital in Fiji. India's involvement is partly driven by concerns over China's influence in the region. While India aims to become a global power in the Pacific, it faces challenges in understanding the region's needs and must focus on niche projects like renewable energy and ICT to build its influence. South China Morning Post, Thomas Over's life reads like an adventure novel, spanning continents and careers. Born in Hong Kong into a family rooted in the shipping industry, Thomas moved frequently due to his father's job, from Kuala Lumpur to the UK. Struggling with dyslexia, he found his stride under the mentorship of a remarkable teacher, Dr. Schofield, at Radley College, where he discovered his strengths and eventually attended Durham University. His career took an unexpected turn from real estate in London to a creative venture in Manila, where he co-founded a production house. Inspired by the film Chef, Thomas and his friends embarked on a journey across the Philippines in a food truck, documenting their travels and highlighting the country's deep-rooted inequalities. Their project aimed to give back to local communities, culminating in the donation of their food truck to a local charity. Now, Thomas plans to continue his unconventional travels, eyeing a tuk-tuk journey across Ireland, always seeking to connect with diverse, interesting people and experiences. Associated Press, Bolivia's President Luis Arce has announced national referenda to address the removal of fuel subsidies and the constitutionality of presidential re-elections, a move aimed at resolving the country's economic and political crises. The proposal comes amid widespread protests and road blockades due to diesel shortages, exacerbated by Bolivia's financial struggles and reliance on fuel imports. Arce's plan to eliminate subsidies risks triggering price shocks but aims to stabilize the economy, which is suffering from a collapsed exchange rate and dwindling foreign currency reserves. Additionally, Arce seeks to clarify re-election rules to resolve a power struggle with former President Evo Morales, whose controversial bid for a fourth term in 2019 led to mass unrest and his eventual resignation. Critics argue that Arce is deflecting responsibility by shifting the decision-making burden onto the public, potentially complicating the political landscape further. Associated Press, Asian markets showed mixed results on Wednesday, with Japan's Nikkei 225 index experiencing significant volatility before closing up 2.3%. This rebound came after a sharp decline earlier in the week driven by a modest interest rate hike from the Bank of Japan that unsettled carry trades and strengthened the yen. The dollar's recovery against the yen boosted Japanese export manufacturers, contributing to the Nikkei's gains. Elsewhere, Hong Kong's Hang Seng Index dipped slightly, while South Korea's Kospi and Taiwan's benchmark saw substantial increases, recovering from recent losses in the tech sector. The positive momentum in Asia followed a strong performance on Wall Street, where the S&P 500 broke a three-day losing streak thanks to robust earnings reports from major companies like Kenview and Uber. Despite ongoing concerns about the U.S. economy and potential Federal Reserve rate cuts, the market remains buoyant, driven by optimism in sectors like artificial intelligence and consumer goods. Thank you for tuning in. The content above showcases the latest briefing reports and analytical synopses, thoughtfully curated by the 6 do team. These insights stem from a wide array of reputable media outlets, think tanks, 
government sources, and specialized experts worldwide. We encourage you to explore these sources for a comprehensive perspective. Keep in mind that while the content may not always align with the official standpoint of 6 Do Brief, it's not meant to be taken as absolute directives for decision-making. Comprising seasoned media professionals, learned scholars, and accomplished scientists, the 6 Do team embodies a trailblazing, fully independent media entity. To customize 6 Do Brief to meet your professional needs, you have the option to subscribe to a diverse array of briefings on our website, 6 Regardless of your location, you can conveniently receive 6 Do Brief via email.